Welcome to Mind and Body. I am Emily Bright, a holistic health and lifestyle coach, personal trainer, and wellness enthusiast. And I'm here to guide you on your journey to healthy living from everything fitness, nutrition, and how to break through the barriers and limiting beliefs that hold us back from the life we want. Welcome to your journey and your transformation. Welcome to another episode of Mind and Body. Today I'm going to be discussing the mind to muscle connection and how we can turn on this little switch within our brain to be able to increase our strength gains and our strength potential. So I will be going over why it's beneficial, how you can begin implementing it into your routine so you can get maximum results. As we know, our brain controls all movement. And most of the time, it seems to be pretty unconscious, um, things that we're not really paying attention to. Like, for example, when you're walking, you're not thinking, okay, move your left leg, now move your right leg, move your left leg. You just simply walk. And this is the case for for a lot of movement that we encounter on a day-to-day basis. And of course, there's much more going on in the brain than this, but we've learned for the most part how to tune that out. However, this can become a huge problem when exercising, specifically when strength training, because the overall point of strength training is to build muscle and increase your overall strength, right? Well, when we're not in tune with our brain in what's called the mind to muscle connection, we can actually be significantly reducing our strength gain potential and the results that we're after. Have you ever been in the gym or at home performing a particular exercise and it just doesn't feel right? You know it's supposed to be targeting a certain muscle or muscle group. For example, the lat pull down is gonna work our back or our lats, hence the name. But you're feeling it in a completely different area than you're supposed to be. And perhaps it was almost uncomfortable and you just thought that you were doing it wrong and weren't really sure what was going on. Maybe you even feel like you can lift a little less weight than usual and it's only your first set. Well, this can be extremely frustrating and I think we've all been there. And it can definitely play a lot of mind games with you and almost cause you to think that you've somehow managed to lose strength over the course of a few days. This isn't the case and what's likely happened is that you've lost the mind to muscle connection. And this could be reducing your strength gain potential and reducing strength gains. So what exactly is the mind to muscle connection and how can I get it back or begin using it? It's a good question. So the mind to muscle connection is a deliberate and conscious muscular contraction. So what I mean by that, it is essentially an individual's ability to focus on the muscle that they're trying to target in a given exercise. It is the difference between passively or actively moving the weight with the intention of engaging and squeezing the targeted muscle optimally. So when the muscle is properly engaged and done so deliberately, you can expect this increase in the amount of muscle fibers being recruited and fired, and you can expect better quality workout sessions, which means an increase of strength gains. Win-win, right? Now, just to give you a few examples of the mind to muscle connection in action, in this 2014 study conducted at the Ohio University Heritage College of Osteopathic Medicine, and this study was under the direction of lead researcher Brian Clark, he had 29 volunteers and he had them all wrap their wrists in surgical casts for four weeks. Now, half of the participants were instructed to sit quietly and visualize flexing their immobile wrists for 11 minutes a day, five times a week. So they're visualizing, not actually moving, just focusing on the muscle and visualize moving them. Now, the other group was instructed just to do nothing, no visualizing, nothing at all, just leave them immobile. So when all the casts were taken off four weeks later, the researchers found that the wrists of those in the vi- visualization group were twice as strong as the wrist muscles of the control group. So this study really helps to kind of put into words how the mind's ability can really connect to our muscles in a really amazing way. 
And these participants, again, were just simply visualizing flexing their wrists and they were able to connect the mind and muscle connection and the results were noted even without moving. So just imagine how powerful this could be when you use this technique with movement. There was another study done that is a little bit more fitness related. And this was done by the same researcher, Brian Clark, and he evaluated whether focusing on specific muscles like the chest and triceps when performing a bench press can actually improve performance of these muscles. So study subjects performed the bench press under three different conditions. One, without concentrating on any specific muscle part. Two, while concentrating on contracting the pectoralis major muscles, which is the muscles found in your chest. And three, while concentrating on flexing the tricep muscles. So under each of these three circumstances, subjects performed the bench press at 20, 40, 50, 60, and 80% of their predetermined one repetition maximum or their 1RM. Now, a 1RM is the maximum amount of weight that an individual can lift for only one rep with good form. So for example, if I were to perform a deadlift at 200 pounds and I could only lift it one time with good form, no more, that's my 1RM for a deadlift. Now, if I were to do 60% of that, that would be 120 pounds. That would be my 60% of 1RM. So that's what they're discussing in this study. So each participant would have discovered their one repetition maximum for the bench press. And of course, each participant would be different. So that would be recorded. Then they would then do the 20% of that, the 40, 50, 60, and 80. So the results indicated that the muscle activity did increase when lifters focused their attention on the two target muscles. So when they were connected to the mind and muscle connection, but only up to about 60% of their one RM. Now, so when basically what they're saying is when they got to the 80% of one RM or just past 60, they didn't really notice much of a difference when trying to use the mind and muscle connection. Why? Well, when you're creating a mental connection to the muscle you're moving, it requires a ton of focus, a lot of attention, and a lot of concentration. And that can really only occur while using weights that you can manage, such as like the 20 to 60% range of your 1RM, um, as used in this study. So when lifting a weight at 80% of your 1RM, which is pretty substantial, your entire mental focus is likely going to be directed solely at heaving that weight up <laughs> safely. So rather than mentally connecting to the quality and intensity of the movement, instead, while lifting a challenging yet manageable weight that really corresponds to the 20 to 60% range of your 1RM, you can really mentally focus on the quality of the lift. And that's the mind and muscle connection in action. And it just shows you kind of the power by connecting to the muscle that you're trying to target, engaging it optimally throughout the entire movement can produce a lot of results. So this resource was found on the American Council of Exercise website um, with a lot of references to the study in which I will include in the description of this episode for you to check out if you're interested. So now I'm going to encourage you to try this little experiment right now, wherever you are with me. So I want you to raise your arms above your head and make light fists while visualizing grabbing a horizontal bar. So like a lat pull down bar. And I want you to bend your elbows and pull your arms down. Imagine pulling that bar down to about your collarbone and then slowly raise back up. Now, what muscles or air of your body did you primarily feel engaging there? If you're like many, then you probably felt it more so in your shoulders, maybe a little in your biceps, um, like your, your neck area. And what that tells me is you're not really fully connecting to the mind and muscle connection. Of course, during a lat pull down, you should be feeling it in your lats, which is why the name is a lat pull down, right? So the latissimus dorsi, or lats for short, are the biggest muscle found in the back, and they're responsible for, for producing movements in the shoulder joint. 
So for internal rotation, adduction, and extension of the arm. So which when you think of it is a lot of staple exercises in an upper body routine, right? With rows, lat pull downs, etc. So now I want you to try that movement again, but this time before you begin moving your arms towards your chest or any movement at all, I want you to concentrate on squeezing your shoulder blades together and keep them engaged throughout the entire movement while concentrating on contracting them as well. So go ahead, engage them, squeeze. Now again, pull the arms down, visualize pulling that bar down to the collarbone and then go back up while still engaging the back, keeping the shoulder blades taut. And this time you should have felt the majority of the movement in your back and a little less in your shoulders and biceps. Is your mind blown? Like it should be, like that's crazy. Just by squeezing and engaging those muscles, you should have felt a huge difference. Now just imagine how much better your workouts will be if you start utilizing this. And it can really enhance your training and your results just by turning on that little switch. So to begin utilizing this technique, first ask yourself, what muscles or muscle groups are you trying to target with a given exercise? Then prior to beginning the exercise, engage the muscle or muscles and keep them engaged throughout the entirety of the exercise, just like we did in that little experiment. Now you also want to especially engage at the point of maximum contraction, like the, much like the top of the bicep curl or the bottom phase of the lat pull down when the lats are fully engaged and contracted. So then even on the eccentric phase, which is the phase in which you are coming back to your neutral position or your starting position, like the lowering phase of the dumbbells of a bicep curl when your arms are straight, um, you want to still be actively engaging. So this can be arguably just as important as the concentric phase or point of maximum contraction, as this is really where you're forced to use control while fighting against the force of gravity that's trying to push the weight down quickly. Now, of course, you want to use it with control. We know strength training is best done slowly and with control and intent, not just using momentum, right? So we want to slow ourselves down in the movement. Now, another important aspect of strength training is a mobility and muscle activation focused warm up. We all know the importance of warming up the body prior to exercise. The aim is to gradually raise our body's core temperature, raise the heart rate, and just prepare the body for exertion. Now, most people see a cardio machine as the perfect place to do this, in which many ways you are correct, definitely. And a cardio machine will certainly raise your heart rate and prepare you for exercise. However, a lot of people leave out the part of the equation when it comes to strength training, and that is to actively engage and activate the muscles that you plan to target that day prior to the workout. So for example, if it is a back training day, then you should perform some mobility drills that help to engage the muscles of the back and enhance the joint mobility. So if it's a leg day, maybe with a glute focus, you could perform activation warm-up exercises like the body weight glute bridge, some clamshells, leg abductions, just to name a few. You can also perform these with a looped band, and this doesn't have to be just for the, the legs or glutes, it can be for any exercise, um, just for better activation. So by activating given muscle groups you aim to target, you're essentially waking up the muscle and telling it to prepare for contraction. Because when we're going to the gym, especially after work or a long period of sedentary movement or just sitting around, it's important to wake up these muscles and activate them so they're utilized properly during your workout. If this isn't done optimally, then a lot of the time when working out, other muscles can take over the movement. And this can cause that feeling of, you know, my, oh, I can't feel it in my glutes. I only feel it in my quads. Or why isn't my back engaging? Or that just didn't feel like a great workout today. A lot of the time that's from improper warm up or activation of those muscles. 
So make sure you do it. Look up some uh, good videos, some good resources. There's tons you can find online um, and start incorporating them. And trust me, you'll see a big difference. Not only will you be able to recruit more muscle fibers during your workout, which again is gonna help allow for better quality muscle contractions, it'll also help avoid injury or avoid, again, secondary muscle movers taking over. So for instance, during the lat pull down, your primary mover is your lats and your secondary mover would be your shoulders and biceps. So just like we experienced in that exercise we did earlier, um, likely a majority of you feeling it in your shoulders as opposed to your back, by completing a mobility warm up and focusing on the mind and muscle connection, you will far better enhance your ability to target that muscle and target it correctly and to be able to increase your strength gain potential as well. So similarly to the bench press study where participants who were concentrating on connecting to the primary movers of the exercise, which of course is the pectoralis major, by doing this, you can also reduce risk of injury. So this will take practice and a lot of concentration. However, I assure you it is worth the extra effort if you wanna maximize your results. So I hope that this has encouraged you to begin relooking at the way that you train and begin to implement the mind and muscle connection as well as muscle targeted warmups and activation in your routine. You won't regret it and your body and your gains will thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Mind and Body. And until next time, stay fit, stay healthy, and stay happy.